express your thoughts uh, on the, the world of Annie Davey, in particular the revised code. And this current session leading up to lunch will involve the sports movement. I'm going to invite the first speaker from the sports movement to actually address from the lectern, and that's Professor Anna Lundquist, who is, as you know, the Vice President of WADA and the uh, President of the ISC Medical Commission, and a man, of course, with a lifetime of experience in anti-daping. Uh, thank you, Professor Lundquist. Thank you, Mr. President. Ministers, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's uh, my privilege to give some introductory remarks on behalf the, of the sports movement with respect to what we have just, just heard uh, and with the respect to the code as such. Um, you've already heard from the IOC president earlier today that uh, the Olympic movement is uh, supporting what we have before us in terms of a revised code. Uh, it is uh, particularly easy for me to, uh, to agree to his uh, support. Um, having been involved in anti-doping since more than 40 years, and uh, almost 30 of them without a code, uh, that was an interesting period in, in my life from the 1970s and another two, three decades until the code came about, when uh, what was in place, you may wonder, at that time, well, not very much really. There were sort of arbitrary rules in the various uh, sports organizations, uh, in different rules in different countries, if any, and uh, when we tried to conduct a fight against doping, we were repeatedly uh, ended up in courts of various kinds and had problems in explaining our anti-doping fight and the validity and importance of it. Um, uh, I can describe those years as a chaos. There wasn't even a court of arbitration for sport. It came about in the late 1980s and was firmly established not until 1994. So there were decades, you know, which were not easy to cope with in terms of a sports leader trying to conduct the fight against the doping in an efficient way. Uh, actually, the absence of a universal uh, rule for anti-doping uh, was one of the main reasons for the creation of WADA back in 1999. Uh, and it, uh, I must uh, commend WADA and the leadership at that time that they did act actually establish a universal code in a record time, in four years. As has been said here, we had, before, we had a code before us at the Copenhagen Conference in 2003, and um, it was made compulsory for the Olympic movement just before the Summer Olympic Games 2004 in Athens. And in a few years, uh, the, our partner in WADA, uh, the public authorities, took their initiative and uh, organized the support of the code in terms of a UNESCO convention which made the code supported by the governments around the world and in 2007 when the UNESCO convention came into force since then we have had this code which is universal which covers the whole world and the whole sporting world and it's a miracle to one who has been fighting back in the 1970s, 80s and 90s without such a regulation in support of what we try to do. Uh, of course, the uh, a exercise like the one we have witnessed um, will uh, cannot make everyone happy in every respect. There, I believe that there are people who have their issues uh, have, that have not been addressed, perhaps, in the way you wished in the code. That includes me personally. But uh, I think the overall result is remarkable progress and improvement. The code in, from 2003 was already a, a, quite an achievement, as I mentioned, a, a major progress in the fight against doping, amended that it was a few years later, and as from 2009, 
and now we have a code that will be applicable from 2015, which uh, uh, is again amended, improved, and will serve our purpose for an efficient fight against doping. Uh, I would like to finish by uh, commending the code review team, uh, Rich Young, Ulrich Haas, and their people for having done a tremendous job. And, uh, and, it, and the end result we have is, in the view of sports movement, a real good result, an exemplary result, and we are grateful to you for having put this enormous effort into such an important work and which will certainly serve the purpose of an efficient fight against doping even more in the future. So thank you very much for having done this. And with those words, I wish to explain again the support from the sports movement and the Olympic movement in particular of the amended code that we have before us today. Thank you.